What's up, family? It's Conversations with Kobe, where we talk about life, love, success, and happiness. Today is a beautiful day. We've had, I've seen many posts today about pearls and chucks. I've watched our president get sworn in and the first black South Asian American vice president get sworn in and she is a woman. This is a beautiful day on Conversations with Kobe. And I mentioned that she is a woman because it is special, but it will not indicate the type of job that she does. And I'm expecting to see great things from her. And secondly, I mentioned it because I was blessed to have two women, my mother and my stepmother, one who chose to take care of me, um, Carried me for nine months and been there my whole life. And another one who, when I was a rambunctious teenager, cared for me, loved me until this day, chooses to be my mother. I appreciate you. And I hope this is a day letting you know that the hard work you put in has somewhat been realized. So thank you. Thank you again. Now, normally I get into this after my real serious thing. I get into it and I talk about um, my wife and situations with my wife. Yo, it's crazy. Um, I love my wife. And, you know, sometimes my ego gets in the way and she does stuff when we get into these like conversations or debates about stuff. And my ego kicks in and I'm like, yo, I'm going to have the last word. And that last word is always going to be, yes, dear. So look, today is a special show. We're going to talk about this show today. And that show is going to be the I'm So Cheney show, where we talk about how beautiful the experience was and the connections that other people from Cheney University have had and how it's impacted them. And we'll be bringing these people on. It's a special two-hour show. See, I got on my, my, my Mufasa shirt. So I'm ready to bring in my first person. The first person I'm going to bring in is a person I spent a lot of time with laughing jokes. Um, Sometimes we were hungry together. Um, there, there's a lot of stories, but I want to bring him on because he start as we talk, we elevate how Cheney has affected us. And there'll be a lot of people on to ex to talk about how special and how beautiful that experience with Cheney was. A lot of people say that uh, HBCUs don't prepare their students for success. And I would like to strongly disagree. And I believe part of these two hours or all of these two hours will only be a portion of what HBCUs have to offer. So I'm bringing in my man right now, uh, brother Crow Attaway. What's up, brother? Kobe, Kobe, what's up, man? Ain't nothing, brother. I'm here chilling. How are you? I'm good, man. I'm good. Life is great. I know that's right. So I do got a lot of love for you, but them flyers <laughs> in the background... I'm not whoa, feeling whoa, that right now. Whoa, slow down, <laughs> low down. Don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> Mind your manners. Mind your manners. <laughs> so what I want you to talk about for a minute was your, 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 how you got to Cheney and then your Cheney experience. Oh, man, how I got to Cheney. Uh, hey, if, if I can be real, I got to Cheney on a wing and a prayer because I was not that good of a high school student. And I did not do very well on my SATs. And Cheney was the only school that accepted me with a campus. But, you know, being a spiritual being, um, I like to think that it was designed for me to go to Cheney because um, I have lineage that went to Cheney. You know, um, mm -hmm. uncle, cousin, you know, uh, one. Of, I, I heard you say earlier something about, you know, your, your other mom, you know, my mom. I consider her my mom. She she is everything to me. And if it weren't for mm -hmm. her and my uncle and my cousin, I wouldn't have went to Cheney. You know, a couple couple mm -hmm. other um, um mentors and things like that. So I think it was um designed for me to go to Cheney and I ended up there. I ended up there, man. And um it was probably it, it was the best thing, one of the best things that ever could have happened in my life. So why why like ex expound on that? Why do you say it was one of the best things? Oh man, listen. It's interesting. When I first got to Cheney, I can't remember who the sister was. She was probably a year, maybe a two above me. 
Um, I heard her say in a speech, you know, freshman on camera, freshman on campus, she was like, you know, when I, she said, when I got here, Cheney didn't give me friends. Cheney gave me family. I'm 17, 18. I don't know what you talking about. I don't know none of y'all, but my goodness, like getting to meet people at Cheney and building these bonds and these relationships and memories and some of the things that I've learned from Cheney, like, uh, you know, determination, dedication, diligence, discipline. Um, three words that I would got from the door, respect, discretion, communication. <laughs> so many of us have heard that. These are things that have, um, that have, you know, shaped me into the man going from a teenage boy into a young man to a young adult. These are some principles that I still utilize today while I'm working with students and my own household and even when I'm practicing self-accountability. Like these are some of the things that I re you know refer back to to remind myself like all right Cheney is my foundation and this is you know pretty much for me I'm gonna speak for myself what I built my livelihood on. Damn that's dope man that's dope so so like what about that family aspect like explain to me like, cause a lot of viewers, I understand you, but a lot of people don't understand when it talks about Cheney as giving you family. Like ex expounding, maybe give us some examples. I'm going to try, you know, because one, <laughs> because one of the thing, one of the things that I've learned is that if you're not there, you just don't get it. I can explain mm -hmm. it to um, Cheney blue in the face. I but know you that's just right. Won't get it, <laughs> you know. But <laughs> like for me, um. Myself and I think 10 of, 10 of my brothers that I met at Cheney decided to do a, um, a youth development organization. Like when we were on the yard, we were called Yuck Dudes, Y-U-C-K, Dudes. Mm -hmm. Don't ask me why. That's, that's, you know, if you know, you know. But when we got <laughs> older, as we got older and worked in the field of human services and, uh, you know, education and all of that, we were like, what can we do, you know, for the kind of students a different vantage point and, and change their paradigms, you know, mm -hmm. to kind of help them lessen the mistakes that we did, you know. So we came up with, we dropped the C, the C is for Cheney, the, the Y-U-C-K is for Cheney. So we dropped the C and we came up with Y-U-K, Youth's Undeniable Knowledge, man. And mm -hmm. these were What's gentlemen the website? that- I apologize um, for the under, it is It is undeniable underscore youth.com. Okay, you know, right. and you can also you can I apologize. Also, you can also follow us on Instagram at um. I think it's the same. No, 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 no. It's uh, uh YUK. That's that's what it is. You type up YUK, it pops up. Use undeniable knowledge. Um, so these were these were brothers, except for one. I only knew one from childhood. His name was Herbert mm -hmm. Wilkins. Everybody else I met on the yard: Dre Teller, Mitch Bailey, uh, mm -hmm. Gabe Boyd, Nabil Abreu. I mean, uh, Angel, Angel. I can't, I can't even remember Angel name. But it's so many of us, you know, that we met on the yard, and we decided to come together and put this pro program. Can't forget my other mate Lee Ride out. Put this program together because we all were doing different things, and we were all were able to give different information to these students and these, you know, the youth, you know, from thirteen to seventeen. Um, mm -hmm. you know, to kind of help them see things differently. It was all about changing paradigms, all about changing your mentality, you know, because more than likely what you think is what you're going to do, mm -hmm. you know, and I developed this with brothers that I met at Cheney and then we branched out, you know, if, if I'm not mistaken, uh, we had you, uh, do like some photos for, it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, Keisha and Ted, we, we we linked up with them and had some of our students do a podcast, a podcast at their house. So Cheney, man, is, uh, we are everywhere and we make sure that we are good and we hold each other accountable, you know. Um, so when I say we're family, that that's what it is. That's what it is. It's almost like, you know. We want we want to make sure that we are successful. We want to make sure that each other are right, you know. And when when we need help from each other, we 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 reach out and we we help each other, you know, from from our era on down. Yeah, that's interesting because that there's a phrase that a lot of people don't get, and it's called Cheney love, and people really don't understand that yet. When you say 
that Cheney love. You know, like mm-hmm. it transcends being on the campus. You see somebody from Cheney that play, uh, went there in 1970, and mm-hmm. they say you from Cheney, and it's a big deal. And so Absolutely. we appreciate and, and 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 that love. I can't I can't explain it, man. It's you cannot explain else. it. You got to experience it. You can't explain it. You cannot and, explain and it. I got to watch you and all of the guys you talk about grow. Like, even if you see when we came in as freshmen and you came in as freshmen, how you evolved into the men you are today. You Every mm-hmm. man you talk about on that list has grown. I remember Reds. Um, that's his name. <laughs> but I remember, you know, he was the oldest dude. He was the most serious guy there at the time. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and Mitch came in a little later. I kind of grew up with Mitch. I'm a little older than him. But, you know, I watched everybody kind of evolve. And that was, like, super duper dope, you know, to watch y'all create what y'all did, do what y'all are doing, and be able to lead the youth, like you said, to change paradigms. Because I saw the workshop firsthand, and I right. thought that was amazing, you know. So if you wanted to leave people, like before you get off and anything, we got a few more minutes, but if you wanted to leave people with something, um, what would you leave them with? Man, look, the just operate operate out of love, man. Operate out of love, caring, compassion. You know, um, be remain humble. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, continue to. One of the things I like to keep keep in my head is that I try to help as much as I can. Cause to be honest, I'm one bad mistake from being in a situation that I can't get out of. Not to say you. that, not to say that I plan on that, but what if it's something that's in the spur of the moment? And I think I I think I'm supposed to go right, but I really should have kept straight. You know. Mm-hmm. So um, you know, and 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 know that for me, I don't think nobody can do anything by themselves. I cannot mm-hmm. do any it, there are some things I can do by myself, but there are gonna be times where I need people's help. I'm mm-hmm. gonna have to ask for help. And I'm gonna have to humble myself, you know, and and hope that I get that help. And this is why, you know, I'm so adamant with helping others. You know, it's 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 amazing, man. You know, and and of course my upbringing is 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 great. You know, mm-hmm. um, but it's something about this Cheney love, man, is ridiculous. I mean, we are doing so much great things in the community, business wise. We got educators. We have uh you know, artists, we got entrepreneurs, like it's it's amazing, man. I am I am very, 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 you know, uh, appreciative of what I've gotten from Cheney University and these um and these um relationships that I built. Um you see me keep looking over, I'm watching the Sixers game. So it's it's all good. Well, I'm about to let you go, but hold on. I gotta bring somebody into the stream. I gotta add somebody in. Do you know this man? <laughs> what up, P? <laughs> Yo, bro. How you, man? Oh, man? Outstanding, man. It's so I good see. to see you, man. Likewise, my brother. Likewise. Yo, oh, this, it's, it's a beautiful thing, man, to see this. Crow, yes, indeed. I appreciate you, brother. Um, hey, I appreciate everything you. That, Thanks for having me, man. You said you wasn't a good public speaker, but you spoke real good to me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know right, what I mean? Right. Thank but look, I'm going to let you roll out. You, I appreciate you, you again. Thank you, brother. <laughs> What's up, brother? Hold What's on. So let, me, <laughs> uh, like, let me introduce you, right? Okay, this, okay. Is, this is Pierre Campbell, all-conference linebacker, and now phenomenal leadership coach. He's been an inspirational speaker. He He's brought people together, and now he's came on to my show. So I want to say welcome and thank you to my brother and teammate, Pierre Campbell. Yeah. (laughs) Man, I'm so happy to be here, man. Oh my God, it's so good to see you. I'm so proud of you. Same here, man. Like, yo, I want to tell you I've been following you and I watch your growth and I love it. I love your energy and I love the things that you've been doing. But I have to tell you something that a lot of people aren't going to get, right? Okay. Um, when you were a freshman, summer ball, I couldn't stand you. 
I know. I know. <laughs> Yo, so so I'm gonna go in. I'm gonna let you talk, but I have to tell this story because I never expressed this to you because I always had love for you. But while we were playing that fr- my your freshman year might have been my first year playing. It might have been. Yeah, but, and when you every time you had so much energy, but you would dive on the end of the tackle and jump up like you made a, a Super Bowl hit. I was so frustrated at Matt. You know, one day at, at spring ball, and I ain't going to snitch on who said it. It was like, yo, the hell with the play. Let's all get pee. <laughs> you know what that sound like? That sound like AK or, uh-huh. or, or, or Chino. Well, Chino <laughs> had my back. I, I hope I don't think, I hope Chino wouldn't. I, I ain't snitching. But it wasn't because you were a bad player. You had to understand that with all that, no, no, um, all that uh, energy and stuff, you brought something that was different to the defense. And it changed how we did things in a way. You know what I mean? And the energy, the inspiration. And I see that transition in what you do now. Like, people may think that your energy and your leadership and your presentations are new. You were like that at 18. 18. I was 18. <laughs> but And that's what leading, number one, is. And number two, that's when you start being a champion because – I transitioned from wrestling to football, which was different. It was an individual sport to a team sport. Mm-hmm. It's a complete different mentality in how you rock and roll. Because I could stay silent in wrestling and beat you up every day, and you're going to understand I mean business. But if football was completely different. Mm-hmm. But look, we've been talking about HBCUs. I want to understand how you got to Cheney, right? And then after you got to Cheney, how did Cheney – mold you or start to form and forge who you are today? Brother, this is so, it's a great question. How did I get to Cheney? Cheney is actually the only university that, that accepted me. Wow. <laughs> so a lot of people don't know this. So I'm this executive coach, leadership coach, speaking all over the country, you know, traveling or mm-hmm. whatever, but I, I was accepted by one college, the first. That one right there, y'all. I know that's right. That run right there. And you and there is no way, like they say, there is no way to su- spell HBCU without the C U. Without the C U, baby. How I do that. How I do that. <laughs> so, you know, so thank God for Cheney. I'm from originally from Far Rockaway, Queens, New York. I went to high school with August Martin. You know, my teammate went to high school together, Larry, our teammate, our teammate. And um, you know, I would we were scheduled or being pushed or encouraged to go to Elizabeth City State. And they didn't accept me. They waited until like the last, very last minute. And um, and Cheney sent a letter back after I took a visit. And I visited and took a VHS tape and, and took that VHS S, S tape to, down to Coach Rulak's office. And actually, I was a walk-on. A lot of people don't know this. I'm glad you asked that question. A lot of people wow. don't know I was a walk on. I wasn't not recruited by any college. Mm-hmm. I only played two years of high school football, junior year, senior year. Larry got me to play football. Wow. Larry I didn't know that. Got me to play football. Yep. He been, he was begging me from freshman year, sophomore year. And I was like, no, I don't want to do that. I'm Jamaican, man. I huh? <laughs> play no football, man. We want to play some soccer, cricket, or something. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that. That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so then got accepted to Cheney over the summer. And my parents brought me down to Coach, Coach Rulak's office, and I asked him, I said, you know, I'm telling you, if you give me a chance, please, Coach, you know, you could, here's my highlight tape from high school. I was really good, but I just wasn't recruited by anybody. You know, I had no idea that we had the nation's longest ro- losing streak. Mm-hmm. No idea. I mean, I was just a 17-year, I, at that time, I was 17. I turned 18 August 30th. So just imagine right before camp, I'm like, I had no idea. So I just wanted to play college football. That's what was on my mind. And I gave him my tape two weeks later, and I had already been accepted over that summer. Two weeks later, I get a, a, a get a mail, a piece of mail, and it says, you've been accepted to Cheney University fo- Wolves football team, and please report to camp August 9th. Oh, my God. I probably <laughs> lost, I lost my you-know-what. <laughs> I was like, my God, man, this is crazy. So... Mm-hmm. Came to camp and literally felt like for the first week, I felt like, okay, this is not what I thought it was going to be. I was like, this is crazy. I don't know what to do. And then literally the second week, everybody slowed down. 
I, wow. I, I had never experienced anything like this before. Because remember, I only played two years of high school football. Mm -hmm. Everybody slowed down. It was so fast for two, for like the first two weeks. I think camp was like two and a half weeks or something like that. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, everybody slowed down. And I was able to see stuff. And Jamie was like, Pierre, you got to slow down. Y'all used to be like, everybody used to tell me, yeah. slow down, slow down, because I was so crazy. That, you, you know, you could tell him my nickname, Pep. So, yeah. <laughs> but like, I was crazy. You know, like, yeah. I didn't care who you were. You could be the starting quarterback. I tried to hit John Flynn. I yeah. tried to hit, I hit Yusef, my boy. Yeah. Hey, I hit him. Oh, I don't care who you were because I didn't understand. I was still a young boy trying to understand the game. And when I got to Cheney, man, it was just amazing because all of you all embraced me. You know, I have a story about you that I'll share later on. But um, oh, wow. but all of yeah, man, a real impactful story. And um, all of y'all embraced me. And, it, and to me, that was that was that was important because got to think about it. I walked on and a lot of people didn't know I walked on and, and, and I didn't know what, what I was really entering. I had no idea about the losing. We won in high school and then I come to college and it's like, OK, you know, and then I got to play my freshman year. Not many yeah. people get to play five years. Yeah. And you would say it's illegal, but no, let me let's be cl let's clarify. I played a couple games that freshman year, and then Coach Willack decided to prop red shirt. red shirt me. Exactly. Yeah. I wasn't prop 48. I was red shirt because he said that you're going to be good. He told me, he said, you're going to be really good. So we're going to what we're going to do is we're going to save you because you need to learn the game. Mm -hmm. You don't really understand the game. So I was mad, um, very mm -hmm. mad to the point where I was with Jamie every You You know, I was with Jamie every day, Jr. every day like really like pissed off and angry used to get really mad. And, um, and thank God they calmed me down, you know, and they told me, listen, Pierre, you'll be fine. You know, and, uh, red DJ, yeah. all of them, all of them sat me down and told me, it's, you're going to be fine. You're going to be fine. And thank God, you know, I didn't lose my, <laughs> my head because I was fine. <laughs> so I'm going to tell you a secret. Cause mostly, okay. most of the people who came late and all those freshmen, you know, I didn't play high school football. Wow. You know what? I think I knew you you were playing football for the first time, but I didn't know you didn't play high school football. That's mm -hmm. crazy. I wrestled. And before you got there, I had went to Nationals three years in a row. I knew and that. So I, knew I, you never, I never played football, um, organized football, except for maybe ninth grade. Right. And so coming on. And I understand what you mean because when I first went out there, I'm going to tell you a funny story. I'm going to let you talk because this ain't my time. But I got to tell you this. When I went out, I was supposed to be a receiver. That's why I had tiny shoulder pads. And when I went out, I counted. It was 20-something receivers and six running backs. So, so when I went out, I went to the running back line, and Coach Rulak was like, Jacoby, this is not wrestling. You cannot change weight classes. Uh, Jac Jacoby, what do you want to do? So I stayed at running back. And uh, everything turned out great. It's so after you got in, and you're talking about the family aspect, and we all talked about that. Because Red, Red took me in because actually people don't know. He was a starting punt returner, and they made me start returning punts. And he coached me because our coach, which is sad to say, didn't teach me how to return punts. So think about that. I took his spot per se, per se, because Red was dope. Oh, he was amazing. And he still supported me. Yep. And helped me grow in that position. But so now tell me about how Cheney uh helped forge you into the man you are today. And give me some situations that helped you grow. All right. So here's the time to tell you the story that nobody knows. <laughs> okay. All right. With you. It's oh, crazy. Wow. I might as well tell 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 a story about you. Uh it was freshman year. And you, a lot of the, a lot of the football players, a lot of the, it might have been sophomore year. Now that I think about it, but a lot of football players were in fraternities and stuff. And um, you may or may not remember this, but a lot of football players was in fraternities, and they were like, "Man, you know, I want you to join." They they figured, okay, you'd be a great guy to mm -hmm. be a leader and be a part of the fraternities. And we would be in practice, and you'd be like, "Man, 
I'm, I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna get you. And every time I would try to get you, you would be back and forth. We'd be back and forth on, on like we're gonna get each other. Mm-hmm. And one day after practice, you were like, "Look, Pep, I think you'll be. Um, I think you had joined. It was when you already joined, so it can't be our freshman year. Yeah, because I was Ooh. online that time. Oh. I was sophomore year. I was online during freshman season. Okay, so then there was sophomore year then mm-hmm. because. But you said, you said, Pep, I think you should be a Sigma. And I was like, I don't know, man. And you was like, and I think you was online with Jamie and Dre. Yep. Mm-hmm. Jamie, Dre, and Kip. So it was not sophomore year. It was junior year. Oh, okay. It had to be the next year. If not, if not, it was in the spring or whatever. I don't know what, what, what time mm-hmm. of the year. But you were a Sigma. And you turn around. And let me tell you, it's crazy because... My mentality, you see, you you remember how I was. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm kind of the same thing, really. <laughs> like, not the same thing. I just kind of keep it keep it low and articulate different levels. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but you turn around and you say, I can't wait for you to join because I think you're gonna be a great young man. And I was like, man. And I thought about it because Jamie was it, you know, Jamie was yeah. like, for me, everybody knows. I was like, Jamie. Red, you know, but for me, I looked up to Jamie. I really did. A lot of people mm-hmm. don't know, like to the to the point where every step he made, I wanted to make it better. Like I wanted to follow every step, and then I wanted to go better. I wanted wow. to do this. Yeah, man, it was very deep, and I think you knew that. I mean, yeah. all y'all kind of saw the way I followed, followed, mm-hmm. my, you know, <laughs> we, we did all, all the time, man. Probably pissed Andre McCall off so much, man. He probably if he's watching, <laughs> sorry, man. <laughs> but anyway, you you know you 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 were you were very important in one of the people that kind of told me, hey, you're gonna be a great young man. You know, just keep it going. Right. Although it pissed me off because there was times where you were like, and there's some some things I can't say right now. You were like, yeah. I can't wait. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> that's the part. Right here. Like, you don't understand who I am, bro. I'm from, yeah. I'm Jamaican. Mm-mm, that not going. <laughs> hey, I, but that's 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 the part that you're supposed to have. Right, right. That's right, what you're right. supposed to have. Right, but but look, it was impactful. Mm-hmm. That was impactful. You know, and Red talking to me, that was impactful. The drives home with Yousef to Brooklyn. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm going to Queens. I'm going to Queens. And 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 like a lot of people don't know, sometimes Yousef used to drive me home. Oh, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. drive. He used to drive me home. Wow. And, yeah. So um, there was a lot, man. There was a lot of different times. Coaches, man. There was times where coaches would say, you know, look, oh, hey, look, man, you our gun, Coach Bo. Let me tell you what Coach Bo did to me. Yeah, I love you know Coach Bo. I love Coach Bo. Oh my God! I you know love. I got to play arena football and actually work out for these NFL teams and mm-hmm. NFL teams, Canadian teams, and other arena football teams. Is because Coach Bo told me my senior year. He said, "Pep, you can play in the NFL." And I was like, nobody had ever told me that. Not mm-hmm. one person. He said, you can make it in the NFL. He said, you just got to make sure you study a little bit more and you got to be confident when you get in front of these people because Mm -hmm. they're going to make you do certain things and they're going to trick you Mm -hmm. with the the questioning. And you got to make sure your speed is right and this and this and that because I was very fast, you know. Extremely. (laughs) Thank you. Extremely. (laughs) You know, I was very fast. Especially for a big guy. You was a huge dude to me anyway. You were a big dude. Yeah, I think it, that then you were like two twenty five, two twenty five as yep. a as an eighteen year old, eighteen year old kid. Yeah, I hated that. Bench, Go ahead, benching, benching four hundred pounds. Yeah, it was crazy. <laughs> Who did that? You know. So, um, but yeah, these are very impactful moments, man, and I'm very thankful for that, man, because without those moments, um, you, you I can recall moments where, like, I got into corporate America, and I was like, okay, whatever. Like no one could, no one could tell me, oh, you you need to do this and meet this this particular goal, and it was a fictitious goal, like something just somebody threw a dart at a dartboard and made up the goal. Mm-hmm. I'm like, come on, man, this is not real. Like I wasn't afraid to speak to a leader, an executive, because of what mm-hmm. I've gone through. I wasn't a, afraid of racism because we, we we went to an HBCU. Like I tell people, I'm interviewed all the time. Like I didn't I didn't experience racism. Mm-hmm. 
You know how much of a benefit that is for us in yeah. college? Not to I know you know how many colleagues I have, how many friends I have that went to predominantly white institutions, PWIs, mm-hmm. where they experience racism. I'm sure you do too. Yeah. It, it, it's crazy, man. You know, so for me, just like you, we get into corporate America and it's like, okay, first of all, you can't hit like me. So that's yeah. what's going to my mind. I'm not telling them that, but I'm thinking you can't do, you can't run. Mm-hmm. So you can say what you want, but you can't. So in my mind, I'm I'm thinking I can I can still jump, I can still run, I can still lift 300 something pounds. So your words are not going to affect me. This is a crazy mentality, but hey, this is I'm just telling the truth though mm-hmm. on how I think and how yeah. I thought back then. You know, and, and as you should. Yeah, no, I got you. It makes sense to me because what it does is that the HBCU allowed you the freedom to build who you were without oppression. And once you were able, you built a level of confidence that when you stepped into the arena, it was nothing anybody else can do to you. And that's the part that our professors taught us, the expectations our professors put on us, that sometimes having those close connections. Um, I have somebody special on the show tonight, so I know you'll be off, but I want you to wait to see who's coming on and, and, and think about that. And, like, I love Coach Bo. He was a defensive coach. And I loved it. He made uh, uh, Jacoby, uh, come here. Number one, number one, come here. Boy, that was, the, that was the way to run that ball, boy. Let's keep doing that. And what was the other coach that was in the military? Oh, oh, my gosh. Yes, the linebacker coach. That used to take the dirt yes. and pour it onto the field. <laughs> and we would go crazy. I forgot his name. Yes, I forgot his name. Oh, well, my look, we, I need you to tell me real quick about yeah. what you do now and how Cheney has helped you, because I got some other people coming on okay. Uh, okay. that you'll be uh, excited to see. Okay. All right. So right now, I'm I'm a magnet for diversity and inclusion training. Uh, mm-hmm. Of course, you, you told everyone I'm a leadership coach, which is executive coaching uh, in some aspects, life coaching as well. But diversity and inclusion, because of the climate of the the the, the United States right now, is huge. And I've become a magnet for that. People are interested. They can go to PierreCamp.com or go to LinkedIn and connect with me on LinkedIn as well. And you can see all of the content that I have out there on my YouTube channel as well. Uh, Cheney has really helped me build the confidence, like I told you before, mm-hmm. help me build the confidence in who I am. Like, I, no, you can't. Listen, failure is the prerequisite for success. That's what mm-hmm. I've learned that. I've learned. I learned my unique gifting at Ch- at Cheney. I learned that I am a truly optimistic person. That's who I am. That's who God gave me the gifting to be. Like I never said, "Oh my God, we're gonna lose this game." Mm-hmm. No, I always knew. I always thought, "Okay, we're gonna win this game. We're gonna win this game." So mm-hmm. it forged me to be this person of optimism, to be able to write the book, Simple Intelligence. You know, go get optimistic. Like mm-hmm. that, that is. That is all from Cheney. <laughs> like that, that comes from Cheney losing and losing and losing. Look, five years of playing college football, I always tell people, won one game my senior year. And then write an optimistic book and become a coach to a lot of executives and students. Mm-hmm. I mean, come on. That, 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 that's God, you know? Uh, and it comes from a clarity of understanding who you are. So um, so that's 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 what it is, man. I'm so I'm so happy to be on your show, man. Yo, I appreciate that, man. I'm going to bring some people on. I got three okay. people to bring on. Okay. Give me a second. I'm about to bring all these folks in. Oh, my God. Look at Dre. <laughs> there we go. Hey, Brent. <laughs> oh, so, man. <laughs> so how's everybody doing? See you, family. Bree. Hey, Pierre. Good to oh. see you. Good to see you too. Oh my god! I hear all this cluttering and mic badness. What's 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 that sound? Yeah, that might be your TV, man. I need it. You turn it off. I was watching the. How 60s. you doing? Hey, oh, right. man, I feel like I want to give a big CU group hug. Right. Oh, I know yeah. that's right. Well, look, P, I appreciate you. Yeah. I'm gonna talk to these beautiful folks coming in, and um, hey, Soro. And um, we're, we're gonna keep it moving. 
Yeah. Hey, Fred. Hey, so, so, hold on. First of all, Dre is on typical CU time a little bit because he was supposed to be on with Crow at 750. So, <laughs> your boy was supposed to tell you. So, I'm going to tell you when he called me. He called me at 730. Yeah, see, I've been talking to uh Crow, I mean Crow for a minute. Yeah, he called and, me. Uh, word up, word up. He called me at 7 30 and I was in the car on my way home from someplace. So yeah, I didn't get I didn't get that man. Then he then he texted me like a few minutes after that and was like, Yeah, we got 15 minutes. So I was like, <laughs> and then I was trying to get on from there. So yeah, that's all that was. So I apologize there, good brother. I mean, hey, you don't gotta apologize. You here now. So look, what I'm gonna do, and I got the whole crew here. What I'm gonna do is we want to talk about. Cheney, our experiences, and, and 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 how Cheney has impacted us. And I'm going to go, it's kind of weird. I don't know if y'all see it the same way I do. I'm going to start with Dre because he's uh, in the upper right in the middle. So, Dre, talk to us about how you got to Cheney and, and, it's, and your experience. Okay, all right. I, I try not to take too many too much of you people's time. I try to, the <laughs> nutshell version. Um, well, I, I got to Cheney my senior year in high school. You know they do those uh those little excursions or whatever. So we they had a little trip to Cheney, and I, I hadn't heard of it yet. But I was like, well, I'm gonna go on this trip with my um with with a bunch of the seniors. So we get there, and my man Robbie has a cousin named Contessa. Contessa mm -hmm. was a Contessa was a cute sweetheart. I think she was a Cookie Monster. I'm not sure, but I, <laughs> but I know she was one of she was one of uh she was a sweetheart from the yard, and Robbie had got, we, we got laws from each other and he ended up going with Tessa and they doing a bunch of Cheney stuff during the day. And we, end up, <laughs> and we end up leaving Robbie on that trip. So, so it was, so it was a whole, yeah, I mean, it was a whole game changer because we was like, where is Rob? So Cheney is that cool? He ran into his cousin and he, and he, the, he let the bus leave him. So we couldn't believe that he lost his job. He had a little job at the Nathan's hot dog joint in the gallery mm -hmm. back in the day and he lost his job and it was a whole thing. He got in trouble with his guy pop and all that. So we just kept thinking like, and, and, and while we were up there, we had a lot of fun and I ran into a couple of people that went to my high school and all of that. So I was like, yo, I think, I think Cheney nice, but I had no idea that I was going there because I had applied to a bunch of other schools and I thought I was going somewhere out of state. Cheney was not on my list of schools to go to. So, as we enter in, as the school year is ending, you know, we're getting into, we getting into the, you know, the spring, like when you're supposed to be uh, mm -hmm. sending all your, app, you know, your, um, you're sending all your college apps away, you know, apps away and all of that. I didn't send nothing to Cheney. Like Cheney was not on my radar. So like the last, but she's like, well, you should try Cheney. One, one of the, her name was Miss, Miss, Miss Ross, Miss, Ro Miss Sharon Ross. She was like, you should try Cheney. Cheney is mm -hmm. a good school. I was like, I've never even heard of that. She's like, yeah, it's the first black school. I'm like, the first black school? I was like, all right, well, I apply. I applied, and I got in the last minute. And I didn't get accepted nowhere else. Like, I got accepted a few places, but I ain't had the money. So I was like, well, I think that's not going to change. <laughs> so I, got, so I, I had a guy that was, um, he was my Bible study. Like, he used to come get, he was a white dude, and he used to come to the hood. And like give Bible study to all the project kids, you know, the the way with souls. So he was uh he was a good he was a good friend of the family, and he uh he got he got all my stuff. I I, I you know I had like two suitcases and a, a duffel bag and a bunch of shoe plus bags, <laughs> like a bunch of you know what I'm saying, like nine mm -hmm. luggage and all this. And he put we I packed the car up. And came up the chain, and I didn't know nothing. He had to go to work. He dropped me off at the top of the hill. Never forget it. Dropped me off at the top of the hill. I'm in between McKnight Rogers and and uh, Marcus Foster. No, 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 oh, no. White, Wade Wilson. I'm McKnight Rogers and Wade Wilson. So wow. I'm in between both of them, not with all my bags in the middle of the parking lot. Like, what am I do? Like, I don't know. I never even. I only been up here to visit chain. So I see a bunch of people. Matter of fact, I just. Matter of fact, one of your teammates, Terrell Johnson. I never forget this. The first time I met Terrell Johnson, I seen Terrell Johnson and his mom up the hill. And I had all these bags. And, and she was like, 
what's your name, son? I was like, well, I'm Andre, and I, I think I'm going to Cheney today. I'm going to try to register, I think. She was like, well, Terrell, get his bags. Help him with his bags. So, like, <laughs> so they started, they helped me with all my bags. They helped me to duckery. And, you know, that's mm -hmm. when I first, I got the duckery, and then I realized what kind of, how you registered was a madhouse. Like, I'm in there with all these Cheney students. We just in the line. Like, everything is everywhere and all chaos. But somehow I registered. Somehow I registered. Got my blue card. And and the rest is history. And then you know, as far as uh, 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 the Cheney camaraderie, the Cheney love is nothing like it. Like you can't you can't manufacture it. You just can only have attended Cheney to understand the uh, the type of uh, the you know how magnetic it is. Like that's the only word I can I can use I can find right now. It's very magnetic because you cannot even have spoke to a person on Cheney Yard, but if you see him uh, at the grocery store, or you see him driving, but hey, yo, what's up, what's the deal? And y'all could not have been friends, but the fact that y'all went to Cheney was the commonality, was the common bond, that that, that it was the tie that binds as the, so yeah, I mean, that's how I got to Cheney. I got to Cheney just on a, like a, 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 a end of the year trip, basically, and by the, by the seat of my pants, registering, and uh, I, I squeezed uh, uh, four years into five, and then after that, I was I was a graduate. So, Ch Ch Cheney has Cheney has been everything to me. It, it's definitely made me a man, uh, and, and it gave me lifelong friends that you know that you you you, you tend you never forget them. You know what I'm saying? And you, when you when you see each other at May weekends and homecomings and all of that, it's it's a special it's a special thing. Even if you know, even if we you know don't like each other for a spell or we might be going through some some things, you know what I'm saying? At at the end of the day. It's family. Because of Cheney, you know, we still love each other. That's it's family. And it, it's unique that, that you bring up that topic because these four young ladies right here, I think they've been riding for over 25, almost 30 years. Oh y'all ain't that old yet. You know what I mean? And so it's it's beautiful. When you tell that story, I mean, it was a little long with it, but we we all dealt with it. Um, Appreciate it. I tried to. I tried to. I tried to <laughs> yeah. But you you tried to. You wanted me to put twenty five years, thirty years of experience in the like into a sound bite. Yeah. Yeah. I, I ain't ready for TV. I'm not ready for prime time. So my bad. <laughs> and you don't got what you family, brother. Ain't no excuses. It, it ain't no excuses. So we gonna go to Anita. She's sitting up at the top row. So, Nita, tell us how uh, uh, how you got the chain. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, I got the chain by way of my math teacher, as well as my um, a really good friend of the family who <clears throat> I consider to be an uncle. He used to work with my mom. So, when I said my math teacher, you kind of made a face. No, no, something happened, and I was wondering oh. what happened to Lucille. Oh. Um, so my math teacher, um, he's a graduate of Cheney. He's a member of Kappa Alpha Psi. Mm -hmm. And no matter you know, what he thought, Cheney was at the end of something. It could have been geometry, algebra, whatever. But at the end of that lesson, Cheney was Let me get my cup. At the, you know, at the end of it. And so when it came time for me to start applying for colleges, Anthony, who my mom considers to be her little brother, he went to mm -hmm. Cheney. He's a part of Elite Social Fellowship, whatever that is. And so he said to my mom, oh, yeah, she's going to Cheney. My mom said, no, she has options. He said, no, she's going to Cheney. So you know how it's time to start doing the application process? He's like, no, Cheney, Cheney, Cheney. I said, no, I want to go here. I want to go there. He's like, you're going to go to Cheney. So my mom said, so are you going to help? He said, if she gets accepted, don't worry about it. Oh, and so I got accepted, and we didn't worry about it. He says that me and all my friends, Tanikki, namely, eat all his food every homecoming. Mm -hmm. But they look forward to us. They even feed us when he's not there. All I wow. have to do is say his name, and they're like, "Oh, okay." So, and and again, that speaks to what Andre says. That's family, and that's generations. They went there in the eighties. Wow. And so I, it doesn't matter, you know, they're, they're like, oh, here comes boy or niece, whatever they want, give it to them. Wow. So I'm, I'm going to move next. I'm going to come back to you, Nita, because that's an interesting story, because I got something that piggybacks off of that about me even coming to Cheney. So I'm going to come down. So Sister Bree, talk to me. 
We can't hear you. Did, You're on mute. You, let me out. Uh, hear you. You're on mute. I, I'm off now. So let me correct something. Somebody uh, made a comment about us being together for 25 years. Actually, it's been 30. Okay. Okay. For us, and we are um, absolutely proud to say that. But um, when it comes to Cheney, I wasn't really upset, but I really didn't have a choice because my mom and I were just like so tight. And my mom was like, that's where you're going because I got to keep my baby close. I wanted to go somewhere else. But my mom was like, no, I need you like 45 minutes away from me is enough. <laughs> and um, it was literally one of and I was well, so let, I didn't fight her on it right but mm -hmm. um looking back it was probably one of the um best decisions that um I allowed my mom to coerce me into doing <laughs> and um yeah I mean it was just wonderful it was a wonderful experience um even after graduation it was a wonderful experience and it still is it literally still is and I don't know. I, I think about, which I really thought about this yesterday, like had I not gone, I literally would not be the, the educator, mm -hmm. probably the, the woman, because I was groomed at Cheney, you know, into the woman that I am, the educator. And I most certainly wouldn't have, um, the sister friends that I have today. So I'm just, I'm happy I went. Awesome. Awesome. And I'm going to come back to why I always ask that question. But, um, uh, Lucille, oh, no, excuse me, Nikki, I want to hear your story quickly. And then we're going to go to Lucille. Pittsburgh. Hey, everyone. Got my shirt on. So, so I'm um, actually a, I'm um, I was actually Luca, I it's my turn. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> a it was my turn. Um, she told me this was my turn. Yeah, I'm yeah but I'm, I'm not getting in the middle of this. Okay. Lucy, um, hold on. Excuse, okay. Hold on. Wait a minute. Sorbor, Sorbor, yeah, go I'm ahead. You can it. keep going. Still, uh oh, Sorbor. Uh oh, Sorbor. <laughs> <laughs> Are we doing that? <laughs> This is a true story. Yeah. So I was on my way oh, to well, Lincoln. I, I did a tour. My uncle took me on a, a tour. And okay, I, he was like, okay, I'm going to take you a little further. We're going to go to Cheney. And I was like, oh, okay. And Damn. so, you know, people have these great stories like, oh, I picked Cheney because of this. I'm going to tell you, I picked Cheney because when I walked into Marcus Foster, it was lit. Um, it was inviting. That's when they had like the radio station. I didn't even finish the whole tour. I didn't finish the whole tour. I was like, I want to go here. And that was absolutely, absolutely the best decision I ever made on impulse. I didn't view the yard. I didn't see anything. It was just, it was popping. Hey. And I was honestly, I was this close to go to Lincoln and I'm glad that I didn't because I have all these wonderful brothers and sisters. So, yeah, that's how I got the Cheney. <laughs> I know that's right. Now, Nikki, I do apologize. <laughs> that's all right. <laughs> all right. So, yeah, my story, you know, y'all know, well, I'm really from outside of Pittsburgh. Don't look at the Pittsburgh people mad because they say I ain't from Pittsburgh, but I am. <laughs> but anyway, um, so I was working in a grocery store and I had already applied to Pitt, University of Pittsburgh. Um, Slippery Rock was um, trying to recruit me to run for them, and um, and I applied to Kutztown. I knew nothing about Cheney. I'm like Dre. I knew nothing about Cheney. Never heard of it. Nothing. So this lady I had worked with had knew uh, Booker Reeves, mm -hmm. and you know y'all heard about the Reeves bus coming to drop the Pittsburgh kids off and everything like that. Mm -hmm. She got me hooked up in a matter of I don't. It was so fast. It happened so fast. Now let me tell you why I didn't go to Pitt is because Pitt said their quota was filled. So then we're talking in the 90s and they had a quota, okay? This was at the University of Pittsburgh. And I can say that my SAT scores weren't the best, but my my um, grades were outstanding. But at any rate, we'll say, okay, they had a quota back in the 90s. And then Slippery Rock, when I told them that I didn't want to run track, they stopped trying to recruit me to come to their school. So I got into Kutztown and I got into Cheney. I didn't know nothing about either one. I'm glad I chose the right one. 
I think what really made me choose Cheney was the fact that it was all black. And I was coming from a um, predominantly white um, junior, senior high school. And I just, I needed that. So as soon as I got on that bus, it was time to be out of Pittsburgh and never looked back. I've always been on this side, as y'all know, been on this side of the state. I went far, I went far. I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't as far as I wanted to go because I really wanted to go to New York or California, but. You went to King Sessions then? I went to King Sessions, yes. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yep. shit, that's what she called it. And, and Cheney yeah. broke me with open arms. As soon as we stepped off that bus, it was on and popping. King wow. Sessington. Wow. That, that's, it's beautiful because everybody has like an interesting story about Cheney. And a lot of times people tell about how Cheney gave a, a hardworking student a second chance and cultivated them to transition from the child they were when they left home into the man or woman they became when they left Cheney. And that was evident in like, and the reason I asked you, and I'm glad I contacted Bree initially, but I'm glad she contacted all of you, is I got to watch all of you grow. I, I think I might have been a year or two, sometimes more than older than some of you, but to watch y'all evolve and then also see the woman that y'all become now is amazing. And I'm an educator. I've been an educator for 22 years. The education department at Cheney at one time uh, was one of the best in the country, and I still believe so. And it turned out fantastic educators, but it wasn't just, just educators. You know what I mean? And to mm -hmm. watch, like, I had personal experiences with each one of you mm -hmm. differently at Cheney. And mm -hmm. we could sit and talk about when we laughed about something, when we, and Dre's still the same. You know, I could tell you about how I even got, like, people don't even know, like, I call myself Johnny Handsome. They think I made it up myself, but it actually came from Dre <laughs> cracking jokes. And so when people hear me say Johnny Handsome, they look at me like I'm being egotistical or arrogant or something. But it was a joke that started at Cheney, and I carried that from here on. No, but, that, what I, no, but what no, I wanted to get to is... I can tell you when he did it, too. But that's another story. It was around Miss Martha. But what I wanted to bring in was talk about um, how Cheney has also molded you. And, Bree, I want to come to you last because you also hold a special position that continues on that tradition and carries that on in Philly. And you are carrying the torch of, of representing and bringing us together. So I'm going to ask you to hold off till last on this one. But I'm going to start with uh, Anita. How has Cheney affected you and molded you into the person you are today? And how does that affect you in your everyday life? Mm, I'll say Cheney has affected me in a way where it's given me an extended family. Um, I come from a large family. I'm the youngest of nine. So we don't always see eye to eye and go into Cheney. You'll find those same family members in your extended family. So it's helped me to understand people in the workforce. So you know how you, Dre mentioned that registration and that chaos that we, that we fell into when trying to register and get enrolled and everything. When you go into the work world with that, you're like, oh, this is nothing. I survived registration at Cheney. I can survive this. So it prepares you in ways that your white counterparts are not prepared for in the workforce. Um, you know, we, you know, as an educator, we were taught excellence. You know, we were taught to go into the schools and to demand this and to demand that and and don't fall for this and don't fall for that. So it it transpires into your everyday life. And so Cheney has given my son aunts and uncles. Cheney has given me sisters and brothers. So it's it's impactful in everything that I do. My son's like, oh God, mom, you wearing something Cheney again? Yeah. I'm literally Cheney every every day, all day. Yeah, dope. I like that. Um, Anita, I love you. We've always been close, crack jokes for years. Lord, six and... up in hall. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'm moving forward. All right, um, <laughs> Nikki, talk about how um Cheney has <clears throat> cultivated and molded you. I guess um one of the primary things I got up going to Cheney is having that moment of um no racism. Mm -hmm. Having that little short time, although, you know, 
we would love not to have it longer, but having that moment of time with no racism really helped me to grow. Um, removing that just, you know, made me uh, stronger, made me more motivated, made me feel like I didn't have to be in a certain place in the United States, but that I can actually reach for higher. Um, I think that was one of the biggest things about going to Cheney. Uh, and I can say that the, my professor, everyone knows him, Jay Otis Smith, that's my boy right there. Mm -hmm. He told me one time, he said, you know, you're comfortable being in the middle. And he was right, because I was always comfortable being in the middle. I didn't want to be the one, the greatest person. I didn't want to be the last person. I was always comfortable being in the middle. So I guess when it came time for me to further my education after a bachelor's degree, I um, thought about what I wanted to do. And I was going to settle for counseling. There's nothing wrong with being a counselor, school counselor and things like that. But I could have took, you know, I, was, I wanted to stay in psychology. Mm -hmm. So I chose the more challenging, just thinking back on what he told me back then, I chose the more challenging avenue, which was to become a school psychologist, which, you know, meant that I had to get more credits, meant that I had to do more schooling. Um, and I chose that because I was thinking, you know, I was going to take the more comfortable route with being a school counselor as opposed to being a school psychologist. And to this day, I love it. It's an intricate role inside the schools. Um, I get to work with our children and, um, and you know, and then even looking back in one of the cases I had, I had a, a Latino kid tell me one day, he told me, you know, he couldn't do things because he was Latino, because it was for white people. It was, you know what I mean? And, you know, I had to show him that, look, look at me, you know, look at where I am. I'm a black person and look at where I made it to. And you can, you know, you don't have to sit here and think that you're just going to be just like your uncles or whoever, you know, whoever the role models was. He was thinking that he could only stay in one place. And, um, yeah, so you know, out there just showing showing the kids that you can be more than what your neighborhood is or what somebody told you you can do, and move forward. So that's how change inspired me. Awesome, awesome. And now uh, I I know I know I'm doing too much, but I like to welcome my soror, uh, <laughs> Beta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated, uh, Lucille James. Can you talk to us for a minute? <laughs> You're on mute. You're on mute. You're on mute. She can't hear us. <laughs> I'm steady. Yeah, Miss Zeta. <laughs> You're back on mute. <laughs> what in the world? <laughs> there you That's go. That's a sign from God that it's time to go to bed. Um, <laughs> but the impact, um, Cheney prepared me um, intellectually and socially. Um, Cheney taught me accountability. I had professors that um, weren't just allowing us to um, show up and not do the work. Um, there was no free coffee. Um, whatever grade I received, I earned it. Um, and so with my everyday life, that's applied um, that whatever I want, I have to go out and get it. I have to work for it and I have to apply myself. It has given me um, lifelong brothers and sisters, um, people that I know I can depend on. And so, like I said earlier, it's, it's just been an awesome experience for me. And Cheney is something that um, I wish I could do all over again. I miss it, um, but it, it was one of the best things that I've ever done. So that's the impact that it left on me. Well, um, I stayed at Cheney for long enough for all of you. <laughs> <laughs> so now, because I, 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 this is the last one, and it's that Queen Brie. Um, I want her to discuss yeah. how it impacted her, but also how she is carrying the torch. And then I don't want y'all to leave yet because your time is almost up, but I got somebody special for y'all. Um, so, you know, I think, um, I think my squad, they kind of just hit the nail on the head. Um, one thing that I'm very, very proud of, and wherever I go, whatever school that I go into, um, I am always pumping Cheney because the knowledge that I received was really like no other. And I'm not just talking about just like book knowledge, but as Nikki alluded to, you know, it was like a black thing. I, I, be, I became like more aware of myself just as a black woman. I became, um, and then the knowledge I received in classes, um, 
Like I, I when I when I walked across that stage, I wasn't scared, you know, to become an educator. I was like, yo, I am ready for this. I am ready for this because every single professor that I had, and I can say this with confidence, like they poured everything into us. Mm-hmm. Everything that they had, they poured into us. And so when I walked across that stage, I got my degree. I was like, all right, well, what school am I working at? Because I'm ready. Like Miss Waters is ready. And so, you know, it impacted me as far as knowledge is concerned. Um, when I got to Cheney, I remember my freshman year, I had big door knocker earrings on, yeah. I had every color <laughs> rewap. I was yeah. like, you know what I'm saying? I had jeans, I had braids in my oh, hair, my. like Bonquisha. But as the years, you know what I mean, went on, it was like Cheney taught me style. Like, mm-hmm. and I mean, it's cool, but when it came to dressing professionally, it was on. Like every Wednesday, you no, know, y'all gonna dress up. Yes. Right? You're going to take those jeans off because if you are entering or looking to enter into the professional world, then you need to wear this. Ladies, you need to wear pantyhose. You need to have on a skirt and you need to have your hair done. Throw a little makeup on, throw some lipstick on, right? And look and actually look like the part that you are trying to walk into, right? So it impacted me that way. Um, and I mean, just meeting people that I had no knowledge that when I met these people as a freshman, like some of them literally would be, they would become like a part of my family. Um, But also, and even if they didn't, the networking is just awesome. Like look at us 30 years later and here we are sitting on your show, right? Mm -hmm. Talking about the impact that our HBCU has had on us. and so, I mean, I, I think, listen, in a nutshell, besides God, my parents, my family, and my very, very close friends, Cheney is right up there in the things that I love, the things that I carry in my heart, the thing that really, really um, just kind of catapulted me into being the educator, the, the woman, and even the mom that I am. Right, because I push H- I push HBCUs um, on my children. Carter's only eight years old, but he going. <laughs> I and love. It. He's going, you know, and getting back. I think the other question was something about carrying the torch. Um, I remember a couple of years ago when I was the chair of Alumni Weekend, and I had to say a few words at one of the receptions. Um. I said, you know, it's important for all of us to roll up our sleeves because we want our HBC, well, I did, I want my HBCU to be there as a choice for my children. So even if my children decide not to go, I want it to be there as an option for them. And so that's why when I graduated, it wasn't robbery for me to come back and go hard for change, right? Because I know how much HBCU struggle, right? And so even, like I said, even if, so my son is in the 11th grade now, even if he decides not to go, I wanted to be on that list of mom, I'm going to apply here. I'm going to apply to change. That's dope. Um, I, I'm, I'm going to wrap up at the end of the show. I hope you're still on listening, but I got somebody special I'm about to bring in. I, I call him the Godfather, right? And when you see who I'm talking about, I'm pretty sure everybody already knows who the Godfather is. Hey! <laughs> Listen, that is hey, hey, y'all. <laughs> Good evening. Yeah. So, so listen, I'm going I'm to talk to Mr. T. I would like to uh, thank all of y'all. I appreciate all of y'all. Um, uh, take it easy and please stay on. And we have a lot more coming. Okay. Mr. Tiller. What's up, my brother? How you feeling? I can't, you know, like, I'm almost 50, but I will never call you anything but Mr. Tiller. (laughs) Thank you, my brother. (laughs) And you were one of the first people ever, when I hit Cheney, that started to talk to me about manhood as a professional. Mm -hmm. And you established 
high expectations of how we were to conduct ourselves as freshmen. That's right. It wasn't a school rule. It wasn't a university rule. It was Mr. Tiller's rule. We had words to live by. And we conducted ourselves accordingly. That's right. And Respect, discretion, and communication. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I remember doing something foolish, and you grabbed your collar and said, Mr. Simmons, <laughs> that is not discretion. <laughs> and I will never forget those lessons um, a day in my life. And you mean so much to most of us that uh, went through Cheney. I know most of the people I'm connected to, they have fond memories, uh, tough memories. And mm -hmm. the one thing I would say when I say tough is you held us accountable. And I appreciate you for that. Thank you. But I wanted, I want you to tell people, because you were administrator, uh, dorm director. You've done other jobs at Cheney. I'm yeah. saying dorm director because that was my first experience and the most impactful experience for me. How did you begin to come at Cheney? Well, I was working at Lincoln, um, and there was a job in the paper about Cheney being at a hall director's position. Mm -hmm. And uh, I didn't like Lincoln's location. I loved the school, but I hated the location. Okay. And uh, I decided to apply for it. Uh, and when I went and applied for the job at Cheney, when I left my interview, I knew I had it. Mm -hmm. Because I had been at Lincoln for two years uh, in residence life. But I was on my second year. And uh, at the time, McCummings had just come to Cheney. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was, he, he had what he called the Renaissance team. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to be a part of the Renaissance team because, you know, I'm a product of an HBCU. Yes. And being a product of an HBCU, for me, I, I just wanted to give you all uh, standards and guidelines, but I also wanted you to have a great experience and have some fun. Um, so for me, it was an honor to help you all to have a, a, a fun freshman year, but also safe and provide an environment that was conducive to academic achievement. Mm -hmm. So that's where I was coming from, from the very beginning. Now, all those things that developed for me were because as a professional, I wanted to continue to grow as well. So I went to graduate school at Wilmington college, Wilmington university now, uh, and I, I, be, I began to, to look at being living in for 12 years was a long time. Yes. I lived in for 12 years. And after that, I wanted to do something different. So there came a job available um, as director for residence life. And I applied for it. And I got that job. And I did that job for about five years. And mm -hmm. then I, uh, as I said, I had gone to graduate school. My master's degree was in counseling, and Mr. Hegeman um, retired, and Professor Carter retired. Mm -hmm. And so I, I, the president, Vital, asked me if I would be interested. At the time, I was working in downtown at the Urban Center. Yes. Uh, I remember. I remember that. Remember yeah. that? I was working down there, and, and Dr. Vital asked me if I wanted to come back and work in the counseling department and teach freshman seminar. I said, sure, I'll try it. And I did. I never really knew I wanted to teach, but that was one of the most rewarding experiences of my life um, because I knew Cheney's history. I incorporated that into the course. Uh, you had to do Cheney history. You had to make an oral presentation, which you had to dress for. Um, mm -hmm. and, and I had so many different branches at, at Cheney because I was, I was part of Lara Janelle. You know, I was with the brothers. You know, I was with the, the hall councils. Hold on, I, I want to stop you for a second. I apologize for interrupting you, brother. <laughs> but you said the brothers. And a lot of people, I know what the brothers are. But Oh, I was advising to Omega Psi Phi fraternity. Um, and I made sure that I supported all the other groups as well. Because for me... You weren't just a member. I mean, you weren't I just an advisor. advisor. You weren't just an advisor. You was a member. You are a member. <laughs> Right. Yeah, I used to step in everything. Yeah, I remember. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I kind of like wanted you all to see that, you know, fraternity life was a serious thing. And, and at the same time, I could go out there and do a few steps and come right back to my office and get busy. I know that's right. And you did. Mm -hmm. You did all those things. And mm -hmm. it's interesting that you talk about being you didn't know you want to teach. 
because you were teaching from day one for me, from my experience, mm -hmm. you know. And so your leadership and, and, and your 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 uh, holding us accountable helped us trans transition. And it, there's a book by Ruby Bridges, and it talks about um, class levels, how sometimes people need a mentor to move from lower class to upper class, and then they need that mentor from upper class to middle class because there's unwritten rules, there's codes, and there's um, things that you don't know until you're in that place. And mm -hmm. for me, you were that mentor. Okay. That's you what know, I was trying to be. And, and, and that's a lot of times when people talk about HBCUs, this is the part that, because most people don't know, I went to Millersville first. Okay. And I didn't have that. I was I was dropped off on the campus, and I could run them up. I don't even think I met the dorm director, but to get my keys. Wow! And so when I got to Cheney, instant molding and education about being a man mm -hmm. and being a mm -hmm. professional started. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and so I have to always tip my hat to you. Thank um, you, my man. And, and a love and appreciate you, but let's talk about like your HBCU because I love Chain. Well, I'm a part of Virginia State. Okay, and at Virginia State, I was a uh, non-traditional student. I was 24 when I went, and I um, lived off campus my first semester with my homeboy. He graduated, and I moved on campus, and there were 4,000 students at Virginia State. And uh, living on campus for me at 24 was a little challenging, but I wanted that experience. Mm -hmm. And that's where I learned a lot about programming in the residence halls and how how I thought the ideal life would be in a residence hall. We had what was called house mothers at night. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and the hall director in the daytime. So for me at Virginia State, I met so many people that were second and third generation college people. Because mm -hmm. you know, in the South, they embraced education a little earlier than Northern people did, yeah. a little differently. So it was amazing to me watching the girls drive their little new cars and doctor's daughters and lawyer's daughters and all that kind of stuff. And you know, friends I had that came from money uh, at mm -hmm. Virginia State. So when I, when I got to be a, a, a sophomore, as an older sophomore, I realized that I was taking my education just a little more seriously than some of the younger people. Um, but pledging was quite something that caught me by surprise. I really didn't think I would pledge. Mm -hmm. But once I saw them step, I kind of got hooked. Um, mm -hmm. And then I had a girlfriend at the time that was a Delta, and she was a senior. And uh, she took me to the smoker because at that time, they invited all the Greeks to come to their smoker. Everybody would have an opportunity to come to the smoker because you put your best stuff out at the smoker. Mm -hmm. And when I went to the smoker and found out about the business aspect and the cardinal principles and community service, I, I, I was like, this is something I could do. And then after having gone online, you know, being the rock of my line and brothers had saw my leadership skills and, you know, decided to make me president as a neophyte. Hmm. And I, I have I was president over several pro fights because uh, there were about thirty people in my chapter. Wow! And, uh, yeah, when I was bosses, there was exactly thirty nine people in my chapter, and uh, it was amazing for me because you know I, I just had the kind of personality that connected with the brothers, and I could could uh, keep them occupied because thirty Qs are very excited and enthusiastic and. <laughs> confident and <laughs> have huge egos. So I had them engaged in a lot of community service, which was tradition, but I mm -hmm. also made sure we had a party almost every weekend. I know because that's they right. financially, and it kept them busy. So then my last semester in school, I actually was a dean of pledges. And uh, again, something I really wasn't looking forward to doing, but my line brother said it was something I should do. So I did that. And I have a wonderful relationship with those guys to this day. They're like my sons. So then coming to Lincoln, um, I came to Lincoln because one of my Virginia State alumni friends, a Delta friend of mine, worked at Lincoln. 
-hmm. And she said it was a job there that I would probably be perfect for because believe it or not, I got a great deal of my residence life experience by working uh, in Upward Bound. You ever heard of Upward oh, Bound? Wow. Yes, yes. yes. Well, if, in the summertime, I would work with Upward Bound at Virginia State. Hmm. And because I was an English major, I taught a little English class with those high school kids, and I lived in the dorm with them. Mm -hmm. And so my second year, I became the head undergrad dorm person, like an RA type of thing. And so when I got ready to graduate, I definitely had residence life experience. I had done it for three years. And then I came to Lincoln. So as, as I heard others of uh, you all say before I got on, HBCUs prepare you in ways you don't even see yet. Because mm -hmm. I had no idea that job was going to prepare me for a career, and it did. Wow. It's and it's interesting. Like I, I, I'm gonna have to move for a second. I don't want you to go yet because what you said was very point and important. Is that how it prepares you for things you don't even know yet? Think? Yeah. No, I'm just talking about HBCUs in general. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. And then one thing, as I listen to you tell your story, every long, every step along the way, you've been educating and cultivating manhood and professionalism among african-american men mm -hmm. and t we respect you and appreciate you but hold on before you go i got somebody i'm bringing on okay <laughs> hey larry <laughs> hey, t, how you doing <laughs> you're doing well <laughs> i well, was listening to, i was backstage listening to you talk and you know I, I I was hoping he was going to bring me on because, um, you know, hearing your voice and seeing you, uh, you know, the uh, impact you had on my life. I wouldn't be where I am today. I have told you many times yes. and um, I always want to be able to tell you how much I appreciate you taking time and believing in me. And um, also, as I said to you before, holding me accountable for when I wasn't doing what I was supposed to do. <laughs> well, you know, um, I, Jacoby, you know, my RAs had assignments. Oh. And I held to a high standard. And when we had staff meeting, I wanted to know what was going on on that floor mm -hmm. from that staff person. And I would tell them, if you can't tell me what's going on, I don't need you. Right. <laughs> I, I walk the building every night. Mm -hmm. I knew how to be discreet about mine. And I was sitting there with the ceiling watching see what was going on down the hall. And if my RAs couldn't tell me, why do I need you? Right. <laughs> That's yeah, true. Better, do you all remember the Star Street Journal? The little uh, news that I used to put in the, in, in the toilet? Oh, yeah. yes. Okay. And I had the bottom line. I wrote once a week about what was going on. Mm -hmm. So I was able to use my major, my English major, you know, in my profession in residence life. Wow. <laughs> it was amazing. Yeah. That's nice. Well, look, Mr. T, we all appreciate you. I got um, love for you all too, man. Thank you very, very much for everything you do. You're welcome. And, uh, we got to go out and eat sometime. Call but, me. Uh, we're going to sit down. Let me get with Larry. You take it easy, Mr. T. All, all right, right, Mr. T. Brother Larry Walk. What's up? What's going on? It was interesting is like we got all these positions and we got all these educators, uh, thought leaders from Cheney. Uh, professionals, and we still respect Mr. T. I don't think anybody outside of maybe his fraternity brothers call him anything else but Mr. T. Yeah, I mean, like I said, you heard me say a few minutes ago, and I, every time I see Mr. T, that's why I said I was glad you brought me on um, from backstage to talk to him for just for a few minutes, mm -hmm. because he and I are also both deuces, so he used to oh, always wow. call, me, call me number, but I, I've told this joke before, but I always knew if I was in trouble with Mr. T, because if I was if I was doing what I was supposed to do, he always called me number. But he got an intercom and would call me Tricky. That was my nickname because you know I was always I was, I was always in student government or doing something else, mm -hmm. and um, I was always doing something. I wasn't sometimes I wasn't doing what I was supposed to do. So I always knew before if he called me on intercom, if he called me number, mm -hmm. I knew I was good. If he was calling trick, call me Tricky. I already knew I had missed that duty or did something else I wasn't supposed to do. So. Oh, wow. I, and like I said, he, he 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 showed a lot of confidence and belief in me, and as a young man. And then, like I said, it was really important that he held me accountable because I think that taught me a lot of lessons as I went on in life. So that's dope. That's dope. So, what fraternity are you in? I'm an alpha. Okay. For for some of our members, I mean <laughs> viewers who don't understand what an alpha oh, okay. is. Okay, okay, I got it. I got you. Oh, okay, Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated. So 
uh, Alpha Phi Alpha was founded December 4th in 1906 at uh, Cornell University. I mean, and you know, Kobe, you already know, I could throw out some prominent members, Martin Luther King, yeah. Thurgood Marshall, David Dinkins. I mean, you know, and so, several, several members of the Congressional Black Caucus. Yeah, and so I, I just had to say that. But you see that, you talk about you or two, you see that number in the back. <laughs> I see it. I see that deuce. I see that deuce. <laughs> that, that's what I'm talking about. So, but, but, but those things, and what I want to talk about, because we, we've had a lot of people on so far, and we're going into our second hour. Explain to me, number one, I want to hear about your journey to Cheney mm -hmm. and then your journey through Cheney and, mm -hmm. and how that shaped along with other people like Mr. Tiller. Like we can name a list right. uh, of people, whether it be mem uh, student members or it was uh, administrators or staff that helped cultivate us as, as professionals and as men. Yeah, that's a, that's a good point. So in terms of my journey, like, you know, on my, you know, getting from, you know, um, from Philly to, to Cheney. So graduated from high school, took a couple classes at Community College of Philadelphia, um, a couple of odd jobs. And then I just kind of, and even I got, I got into accept a couple colleges right out of college, but I just didn't go and I just couldn't get my act together. And then I decided at some point, I think after, right after college, I started doing a lot of reading, right? I was doing a lot of reading. And I decided that I wanted to go to an HBCU. And I was seeing the Philly area, um, the two HBCs, Lincoln and then um, Cheney. And then um, I looked at, um, I think, Talladega College, uh, mm -hmm. which is, I think, in Mississippi or Alabama. And I decided, well, I'm going to go to Cheney because I was at a, you know, wanted to major in education because there weren't that many black males in you know, education. Got to Cheney's campus. Um, and so, I, you know, I guess when I'm, you know, and then I talk about Mr. T making me get an RA. And I remember something like my, um, my first semester on campus, I, I was, you know, we're packing up to leave and I saw Mr. T in the hallway and he said to me, I'm going to make you one of my RAs. And at the time I was like, okay, wow, that's it. You know, I, you know, I, and then, you know, summer came back and I moved in, just moved in that same day to King Hall. It was the first day you could, you know, you go to your dorm. And this is when they had pay phones. <laughs> we yeah. agentized when they had, you know what I'm talking about, when they had pay phones and I was in my dorm room. And somebody knocked on my door. The payphone was like right across. I can't remember the floor I was on King Hall, but it was right across the hall. Somebody knocked on my door and somebody was like, you know, Mr. T said he wants you to come to an RA meeting that night, seven o'clock. Hmm. To be one of his RAs. And I was just kind of taken aback. So, you know, I walked over to um, the dorm. I think it was Robinson Hall at the time. And I opened the door where the meeting was. And there was all these upperclassmen. So I saw like Brian Phillips, Tellis Jackson, Curtis Sa Savage. I don't even remember Naeem, who's from L.A., Mm -hmm. uh, I think Mike Green might have been in the room. Um, mm -hmm. And so I walked in the room. I was just like, OK, wow. OK, this is going to happen. So he was like, sit down. You're going to be one of our RAs. And so, like I said, Mr. T, one of the things that when I talk about Mr. Tiller, I always say to people is that he was the first adult that really gave me an opportunity to show my what kind of leader I could be. Mm. Right. And so that kind of began my journey as a resident advisor. And that first step was important because, like I said, and I, Brian Phillips and I have, I have the pleasure of serving with Brian on the Chain University Foundation board now. And I've often said to Brian, to him and like people like him and Tellus and, and Curtis, they had always had high GPAs. So mm -hmm. that was so when I saw that, and once again, I was one of Mr. T's RA. So it was, it was a level of excellence that was expected. Mm -hmm. I realized that I needed to have high GPA. Right. So mm -hmm. and I know you and I, you know, we talk about D9, particularly days like day today, you know, we're all proud as D9. Right. Yeah. But I always remind people that in terms of how our organizations are important is that you can be in a different organization and someone can be a role model for you. Like Mr. T was a role model for me. Yeah. I told Brian many times he was a role model for me. Right. Mm -hmm. um, because, like I said, he was an academician. Right. So I knew that that's the that's example Mr. T has set for us already. So that's that's what I needed to be. So I had each had to have a high GPA be involved in extracurricular activities. Obviously that led me to pledge Alpha, um, mm -hmm. Vice President of Student Government, student, I was student member in the Council of Trustees, did a bunch of other stuff, but Cheney molded me, it gave me the opportunity to grow, um, particularly the HBCU, but allowed me to make mistakes mm -hmm. and not allow those mistakes that I made that people hold me, say to me that you made this mistake, I told you you don't belong here if I don't went somewhere else. Yeah, deep. That that's it, it's it's so it's so interesting because I want to talk to talk to you a little bit later. But like the other thing is that connection 
that through line, like you talked about with some of those people at Cheney and how it wasn't about like, I'm a Sigma. I'm a member of Phi Beta Sigma Fraternity Incorporated. Mr. Tiller was a Q. Andre was a Q. You're an alpha. I could talk about Richard Blue. Mm -hmm. um, I could talk about Coach Johnson. You'll see him later, who's a Kappa. Right, right. I have somebody else who, who brought on. These were all men that molded me, whether they were at a student or a staff or administrator. And so it was a beautiful experience being able to share that with men mm -hmm. that I didn't get to the didn't get to really share those experiences with. And to see those men change because we've seen a lot of guys that come in with Timberland boots, baggy jeans, and after they get through Cheney, they got suits on, suits they're sharp. Yeah. yeah. You know, and um uh, half of them dress like David Dunn when this is over. Mm -hmm. You right. know, right. Right. so it, it it's really it, you get to see that evolution and you're allowed to evolve. Mm -hmm. You're allowed to grow. And and talk about how that has impacted you now and what you do. Tell us kind of what you do and how that has helped you get where you're at right now. So right now I'm a, a professor at the University of Central Florida, um, which is in Orlando. And um, I'm in my second year there, but um, I've taught in higher ed before. I taught at Howard. Uh, I taught at Lowell University of Maryland. Um, I worked at Morgan State, done some research there when I was finishing some of my graduate work. Mm -hmm. So, um, but right now I'm essentially a college professor. So I do, I teach prime, I teach only graduate students. So I teach doctoral and master's degree students. Um, my research focuses on three primary areas. So like research policy um, and race. So a lot about race also. Um, so uh, teaching courses, I do a lot of writing. Uh, you know, journal articles, I've co-edited two books. I've written a bunch of book chapters. So I do a lot of writing. A lot of research. Um, and then, you know, really the last couple of months in particular, I'll only also go back a little bit, which is important about my, my current work, particularly my research on policy. I spent almost five and a half years working on Capitol Hill in DC. So mm -hmm. I have a policy background. So that's one of my research lanes. So um, a lot of my research, I talk about politics, um, wow. particularly as it relates and I make the connection between race and leadership. So yeah, well, we're going to have to bring you back on the show for a show about those kind of things, because that's what we talk about here. But the thing, and I have to get ready to let you go. I have my next guest coming on. But before I get into that, is that you do all these things. You worked all these places. But we all ate lunch and dinner at 8 S. George's, right? <laughs> In the calf. Yes. And people talk about the preparation. The, one, the misnomer that HBCUs don't prepare you. And that misnomer really... Um, holds a lot of, um, especially in the North, because HBCUs in the South are slightly different in how they operate. But the attitude about people coming to HBCUs in the North, it really holds them back. And it's a, it's really wrong. We are prepared in so many ways that people really don't understand by the time we get we get through uh, Cheney University. And um, I'm going to bring my next person on. I don't know if you know this person. You may or may not. But I'm about to bring on my brother right there, Brother Herman Moultrie. Hey, what's going on, man? What's up, man? How you doing, man? I'm doing great. And yourself? I'm just, I'm just, you know, just had a chance to slice it up with this brother, so I'm good. All right. It's sounding good. I'm, I'm about to let. So, were y'all at school together? Did you ever meet Herm or Larry? He looks familiar. I think we, I think we might have yeah. met. I was in '91. What, what year you graduated? Oh, okay. No, I was going. I came in like '92. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. But I was so, still I, I, a few years after that. Yeah. I probably see you homecoming or something. Yeah. yeah. But I've been there so long. You know, my decades run together. So I'm not sure who was there <laughs> with who. Right, look, I got you. Brother Larry, I appreciate you. I'm going to contact you because what you're talking about now, I really want to get into. But right. I appreciate you coming on to talk about uh, the beauty of Cheney University. And and, uh, and thank you very, very much. Ooh. Hey, Brother Herman Moultrie. Hey, how's it going, man? Oh, it's beautiful, beautiful, man. Listen, so I'm going to introduce this brother. This is Brother Herman Moultrie. Um. Uh, he is a member of Five Beta Sigma Fraternity Incorporated, but also he is, you know, he also is a member of the Cheney University Hall of Fame because he's an All-American wrestler, you know, coming out of Saginaw, Michigan. So, so brother, talk to us about you getting to Cheney because yours was interesting coming as an athlete at a sport they didn't even have when you got to Cheney. That's true. Um you know, the, the coincidence, like you said, Coach Johnson, Harold Johnson, um, actually works up Cheney, I think, currently. He actually came um, – he's actually from Saginaw, Michigan. 
Mm -hmm. So he came and actually talked to Coach Perry and, and talked to talked to me about coming up to Cheney. So um, I said, hey, you know, it sounds good. I never heard of Cheney. You mentioned it was an HBCU, and I'll say, hey, you know, um, I don't mind going up there and, and giving it a shot. So, you know, that's how it worked out. I was actually looking at Central Michigan, a couple of schools in Michigan, but, you know, after he locked in and said, hey, man, we want to start something big up Cheney, get the wrestling program back started. And um, I said, hey, let's do it. Wow. that That's, that's interesting because I didn't have that store. Mm -hmm. You know, I had a different – I went around the corner, and that's kind of unique, like – I'll get into it. I'll get into it later. But I want to talk more about you because how was the wrestling program? And how was your experience at Cheney in those early years before a lot of things? Because you were part of the first group of wrestlers to ever come to Cheney. And people don't realize Cheney was ranked nationally from not having a no pro program to in three years ranked in the top 15 in the country for two years in a row. So talk to us yeah. a little bit about that. Um. In the beginning, like I said, it, it was fun. Uh, my first year, we actually did, uh, we wrestled for about a month from July to February. Um, we had probably about seven, eight guys on the team. And, you know, we just competed. And, mm -hmm. you know, I went out there, you know, I only know one way is to go hard, you know. So, you know, I competed hard for that one month. And then the next year, what actually happened, um, Coach actually went back to my high school. We brought in Roy, Bill, Craig. Mm -hmm. and quite a few guys you got marty and that was i look at that as really the first year um when we actually um competed as a team i think the first year was more of a club mm -hmm. and then that next year uh, we actually competed as a team and then like i said early stages you know a lot of guys had to take their lumps you know what mm -hmm. i mean so we went out there but i think one of the things we did you know we went out and competed you know we started you know wrestle Phi beta you know, mm -hmm. I look at it becoming a, um, a team to a family. You know, what mm -hmm. I mean, I think that was one of the reasons why we were so successful. You know, we did everything as a group. We had fun. Um, we made it exciting. And every year we just got better. And Coach brought in, you know, better recruits also, like yourself. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Um, but so how did how did Cheney start to help you become a man at that point? And how did it help prepare you for, for what you do today? Um, I would say, you know, going to Cheney, you know, you see it all, you know what I mean? So now nothing really um, shock you, you know what I mean? You didn't mm -hmm. see everything up Cheney. You know, I can tell stories for days in terms of some of the things we had to go through and even listening to the um, the podcast, some of the stories that some of the females mentioned, it's true. You know what I mean? So when you go through certain things, um, it makes things easy when you see some other things that's happening. You, you just laugh at them. Like, Hey, I want to change I, I can get through all of that. It's not a problem at all. So I, I'm going to tell, since you mentioned some stories, I'm going to tell a story. You heard me tell this story a bunch of times. You're probably tired of me telling it, but I'm going to keep on telling it. So when I first went to Cheney, I was like, Dre, um, he might not know. It. They dropped me off at the gym though. And all I had was a pillowcase with clothes in it. And a big plastic bag with clothes in. I had to go to wrestling practice. It was only one person in the room. And you were standing there on the scale weighing in. Was mm -hmm. cut up 158 pounds. And you was like, come on, young freshman. I walk in there. I had on a white t-shirt and some shorts. Herm grabbed me by my crotch and my armpit and dust mopped the mat with me. And my whole side of the shirt was gray. And remember Pam Trowery? She was yeah, beautiful. Oh, pay. She sticks her head in it. I'll never forget it. She goes, Herm, leave that little boy alone. So you go from being the big fish to the little fish immediately. Yeah, that's, you that's know? what happens in college. But then after that day, you put your arms around me, and you've been my big brother ever since. And okay. you 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 drove me around in, in that little blue car. Yeah, Geo Metro. Yes, and talked to me, took me places, mm -hmm. invited me. And I don't think... Except for maybe the wrestling tournament, my entrance fee. Being with you, I never paid for anything. Mm -hmm. And you've always uh, talked to me, cultivated me, but you held me accountable and had a high standard for your expectations. And I don't know if you remember, even me joining Five Beta Sigma was because we had a conversation in that Geo Metro driving around, going mm -hmm. to Wawa. You talked to me, 
And you you didn't say, yeah, you join mine. All those other ones are bad. You always told me you got to find out where you fit in mm -hmm. and look at the others and do your research. And your brotherhood, the other brothers, and I know this should be your time to talk. I'm going to get back to you. But I'm you good. mean so much to me, brother. And, and the kind of man I've become, the wrestler I've become, and, and that has saved my life and taught me other things is all because of that start that you gave me. Because I was able to lead because of being able to follow. You oh, know? Yeah. And I appreciate you. Yeah, I think that's important. You know what I mean? That's one of the things, believe it or not, um, even in high school, my wrestling coach, um, Coach Perry, you know, I didn't start wrestling until I was in the 10th grade. And mm -hmm. so what he did, you know, he, he went from team to family. We got a group of guys. I went to all black high school. And so, you know, we we did everything together. We took us to wrestling camps. Um mm -hmm. And then by the time my senior year, you know, I ended up placing fourth in the state. And so, you know, and, and I and I actually owed it all to Coach Perry. You know, he basically went out and, and did a lot for us. And and so I tried to do the same thing. You know, I, I mm -hmm. you know, even at Cheney, you know, a lot of the guys that, you know, end up actually end up pledging um, Sigma. You know, my thing, I just try to lead by example. You know, I mean, you know, everything is bigger and better business. And, hey, let's go out there and have some fun. But you still got to be serious. And um, like I said, our senior year, we did a, we did a great job. Like I said, we finished 10th in the country. And mm -hmm. then that next year, y'all finished within the top 15 in the country. So, you know, it was great to, you know, start from a club and then four years later, you know, being, you know, top 10 in the country. That was great. Beating people up. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so what are those other things about Cheney outside of wrestling that have impacted you? Um, I think the biggest thing, like you said, the fraternity. You know, I actually played mm -hmm. as a sophomore. And, you know, so I had, you know, three, <laughs> three, four years on campus. So I think that was great in order to be able to continue to um, build, you know, brotherhood. Um, mm -hmm. So that's probably was huge to me, you know, joining the fraternity and then basically, you know, trying to represent the fraternity in, within the right way. And mm -hmm. then, like I said, believe it or not, you know, I've been teaching now for like 24 years, but when I went to Cheney, I actually got a degree in electronics and drawing and design. So oh, I actually had to go back and get mm -hmm. my certificate after I graduated from college. Wow. So it's interesting how, you know, how God worked things out. I mm -hmm. worked at Clayton School. I was mm -hmm. a counselor. I mean, I was a, in the recreation department up there. I met a guy. He was coaching wrestling at Concord. And so um, Slayton actually started a drafting class up there. So I taught at Slayton two years. I coached at Concord high school wrestling. And mm -hmm. then them two years at Concord, you know, the principal came to me, Hey, do you want to come up here and teach at Concord? You know, so that's how it all worked out. And the principal actually moved to Brandywine and I actually ended up um, teaching at Brandywine for 11 years. Yeah. I actually, we just wrestled against that coach. Okay. Um, we, we beat him, but it was, it was, you know, it's COVID. So it's a little different, mm -hmm. but he asked me, did I know you? Okay. And I was like, heck yeah. <laughs> so, like, now, as you go back and when we think about Cheney, right, how do you feel like it prepared you to be that professional that you are? Oh, yeah, definitely. You know, I think Cheney brought high standards. You know, uh, we was in the industrial technology department, me and uh, Julius Flynn and some of the other students there. And it's funny, we was just talking about it. We had to take a class in the business uh, area. Mm -hmm. And in 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 the um technology department when we did we did presentation we we suit and tie you had to get a fresh haircut you know making sure you you know um pointer and all of that so we had to do one in the business department and we came in with all our suit and ties on and and just really rocked it and and, and tore it up and it was like oh y'all try to make us look bad like no that's how we do it you know I think Cheney that's what they taught us excellent you know and do things great. Yeah, you know, and, I, I still try to do that today. That's that's awesome because that's that's what I learned, and it molded me and pushed me and challenged me to to be um, the man. Like I, I'm gonna tell you a fun. I wait till Coach Coach Jay comes on. I, I blew. I end up blowing my own surprise. But um, yeah, I heard it early. I said, like, "Okay, Coach Jay." Yeah, so I blew my own surprise for you. But like, I got a story I'll tell you about. But like. That ability, like I said, Cheney was the, the place where second where students were given a second chance to grow. 
you know, a lot of students that might not have seemed like the typical uh, college student was able to come to Cheney, be molded and cultivated, and then develop and flourish at Cheney University. Because we could talk about, like, I remember Mr. Fleming. If anybody's oh, yeah. having the Fleming, Fleming mm -hmm. locks his door after 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. If you late, you ain't getting in. Mm -hmm. And if you threaten to fight him, he might be about that life. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He's like a third degree black belt. I don't think yeah. he'll do that. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't, I, I, you know, that's one thing I wanted to, to impress upon, you know. And like we said, the brotherhoods, like you're talking about brothers that, that you share, cry with, study with everything mm -hmm. with that are now lifelong friends oh yeah and these connections that have trans uh i forgot the word i'm you from across the time and age mm -hmm. and everything yeah. else yeah. it is beautiful to see that and and cheney was a place for me um that i was able to sit with black men of different cultures races i mean uh religions Mm -hmm. experiences life and sit in one room and have a civil discussion and challenge each other's thought process Mm -hmm. You know, I was in a room with five percenters, you know, black uh, Hebrew Israelites. Oh, yeah. Jews and uh, and and and, ha and Christians and have a great discussion. Mm -hmm. You know, I and um, um, Kyle posted something. Yeah. Brother Fleming. I remember he pledged me in class, too. I ain't going to keep talking about that, but he would get you. He would definitely get you, man. Oh, yeah. Fleming, so good if, people. if you had. Somebody asked you about coming to Cheney or something. What would you tell them? Uh, repeat that one more time. If somebody, if somebody asked you about coming to Cheney, what would you tell them? Oh, I, you know, it was life changing to me. You know what I mean? I, I thought it was all within God plan for my life. Um, like I said, with Coach Johnson coming to you know Saginaw, being from Saginaw, coming back, you know, bringing me to Cheney. And by uh, me, my first year, you got to think, nobody ever heard of Saginaw, Michigan. They're like, what is Saginaw? <laughs> you know, and so, and it's funny, you know, within those four years, you know, we we brought in quite a few people from Saginaw, and, and I think we represented ourselves well. And so mm -hmm. I would say that's what Cheney did for me. You know, it grounded me. Um, it taught me a lot of different lessons in life. You had a chance to meet a lot of different type of people. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it ain't just cookie cutter. You're going to see everything. And so, you know, you just got you learn how to make adjustment to all different types of people. And I think yeah. that was important. And then even though, like you said, we went to, you know, uh, HBCU. But like I said, me and Mr. Tiller, was, we, we, we boys, you know, what I mean, so we got a real good relationship. Coach Johnson is a Kappa, you know, what I mean, so um, mm -hmm. Bill and the Craig is cues, you know, what I mean, so even though a lot of us is not in the same fraternity, we all represented the same thing, just trying to be great men. I think that was important. And so even me being uh, a Sigma, um, I was always trying to welcome brothers to the plot. Like, hey, you know, it's all about, you know, just uh, welcoming brothers and, 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 and trying to treat people right. I think that's important. Yeah. And, 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 and that's funny you say that because those are some of the things that I also carried on. And it was a tradition that that after you left, we tried to carry on and uh, treat brothers the same way. I still that's part of who I am today. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and it, it means a lot, man. It's, it's, it really sets the standard. And I think people don't really understand Cheney because all the bad press mm -hmm. and people always talk about the fun times at Cheney. They don't talk about when they went to class, but who mm -hmm. wants to talk about class? Mm -hmm. You know, we want to talk about how we enjoyed life. Um, uh, we did right. what we were supposed to, we graduated and we are successful and mm -hmm. we're productive. And so I think a lot of times people misunderstand um, what an HBCU has to offer for the African-American uh, man and actually for any student. Because so I had two white roommates. Um, and that's that's a whole nother thing. Coach Johnson is doing Coach Johnson. He's still late. He's a little late. But I think one good point you made, though, even with Mr. Fleming, you come in late, you're locking the door. I can remember a freshman year when Coach Henson, he was teaching health. And I had like an 830 class, you know, <laughs> and I'm like, man, I want to sleep in. I came to class late. And, you know, he gave like a 20 minute speech how one of the top athletes up here at Cheney can't get to class on time. <laughs> and he started talking about, you know, all the golfers, they out on golf course at six o'clock and you can't get here. At eight, you know, so he started breaking down how money work and and the people, you know, um, 
um, out there doing all the business transactions before eight o'clock and, and I'm coming in at nine. He said, boy, you ain't going to make it. So, you know, we did that speech that one day and I wasn't late no more to class. I was like, all right, coach, you got me. I get up on time. Oh, wow. Uh, I, you you brought up somebody. Miss, remember Coach Henson's famous phrase? Uh, it ain't in the budget. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it was good to see Coach Henson for homecoming. He's still looking good. Oh, he looks exactly the same. Yeah, he did. He looks exactly the same. Mm -hmm. um, Coach Jay is in here. He's killing me. I'm, I'm a fuss at him. He might not. He might log on. He might not. Remember, we used to call him Space Ghost. Stop, man. I ain't going there. I ain't going there. <laughs> but no, but I'll say this. You remember those long trips, them long oh, drives? Yeah. Oh, Coach yeah. would talk to us about being men, mm -hmm. how to prepare ourselves. Oh, yeah. I think that was important. How to dress. Mm -hmm. I, the year after you left, I never forget being screamed at. You know, I won freshman athlete of the year, my freshman mm -hmm. year. Mm -hmm. What I went to the uh I went to the banquet in green slacks and a in a, a pattern silk shirt. Mm. Yo, Coach Johnson had a fit. I've never wore Greens, green slacks, or or a uh, uh, <laughs> tiger color shirt, or anything. Oh yeah, after that, to any banquet or anything. Mm -hmm. He was so integral in talking to me about uh, life, uh, um, expectations, presentation, and mm -hmm. it wasn't just clothes and superficial. Mm -hmm. It was about how I presented myself to the world as a man. As a leader, and as a, he always said, you represent you represent Cheney University. That's true. You represent Cheney University, mm -hmm. and um, that was big because today I still do that. Um, those are the lessons I learned from all my mentors. I wish he was here, man. Um, mm -hmm. I'm getting ready to cut the show short. I'm about to do my last few minutes. Okay. Um, Herman, you know you mean a lot to me. Oh yeah. You know you always were my big brother, and you've taught me. Many lessons. You might not have directly said them, but I watched your walk. I admire you, and I appreciate you, brother. You know what I mean? Yeah. So and told me you're doing a great job. You know this is this is great what you're doing. You know what I mean? And, and you represent um, Cheney you very well. I just want to let you know I, I appreciate what you're doing, man, and, and keep doing it. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. You take it easy, brother. You know I'm gonna be hit, hit, hitting you up later. All right, that'll so, work. <laughs> take it easy. So. Today, I want you to understand this, man. As we embark on our new journey moving forward, as we grow um, as a country, as, as my people who listen in and tune in, Cheney University was a very, very important experience in my life and in the life of the people who touched the campus, whether you graduated or didn't. Cheney University helped build you. It helped grow you. It helped give you perspective, it helped ground you, and it hold, held you accountable for your own personal success. And so I like to leave, and this is part of my personal love letter to Cheney University, all my classmates. And I'm a unique Cheney student, and I joke about it because I'm not a quitter. I went in spring 91. I got my degree um, in spring 2000. I was there off and on for years. But what I did there helped mold me, helped me grow, and helped me be able to do things I never thought I could do as a person and a human being. And that's what HBCUs do for many of us. You know, in a place where we are allowed to be who we are without judgment. And, um, you know, I'm going to tell my story on how I got to Cheney. Um, I went to Millersville first to wrestle. Um, I didn't understand the coach. And I didn't get it. I was a mama's boy, too. So I went home. I was working at Pizza Hut, catching the cat bus. If you're from Harrisburg, you know what the cat bus is. Up 22 to the Pizza Hut, working the lunch shift, and then coming home. I was content. The secretary, of the athletic department secretary, her daughter was at Cheney. Uh, her daughter... Um, and was a Zeta at Cheney. 
She said, do you want to go to Cheney? I said, do they have wrestling? That's all I wanted to do. But when I got to Cheney, I never forget Mr. Dudley. If you see this, know that I appreciate you and I adore you. He took care of me. He looked out for me. He checked on me. When he came to Cheney, he looked for me. The Cheney Athletic Department. My, we didn't have, uh, we had pay phones, a hallway phone and toy phones. My grandma could call the athletic department and they would hunt me down so that I needed to do whatever I needed to do. So at Cheney was a home away from home. And I don't just mean it was a place where I stayed. It was a place where I was taken care of like I was a child of Cheney. So Mr. Tiller, Herman, Mr. Dudley, Coach Johnson, uh, Mr. Flynn. Uh, uh, I can continue to name hundreds of people that passed through Cheney that have helped me grow in a million ways, whether it was a small personal conversation or just a shoulder of support. Um, thank you. So everybody listening. I'm Cheney University through and through. HBCU product. Much love.